Well, we're playing a a uh, a Yuri game, a milf, a mystery milf dating sim called Love on the Peacock Express. <laughs> Waiting for that question, but I'll just start anyways. Alright, what is my name? I'm always going to go for the usual things. If it's a male, I always go for Loker. If it's a female, I tend to go for Simon. I don't know why. <laughs> Deciding between two games- I've already decided! <laughs> a light breeze slips through Kite Station as the Peacock Express pulls up on the tracks. This late in the summer, it's starting to cool down and I'm grateful for my jacket. That's not going to stop me from going on vacation. I've been waiting for months. Please line up it for the train in an orderly fashion. The conductor will take your passes one at a time. Despite her request, the crowd surges forward, jostling me into the very center. Dodging bangs and wayward elbows, I squeeze my way into the actual line as the door to the train slides open. It's a full week trip from start to finish, weaving around the country with stops in half a dozen major cities. For once, I can kick back and take the ultimate scenic route. Tickets out, darling. We have a lot of you to get through. <laughs> Those roses that came out when she popped up. Ooh! The conductor filled the doorway with a burst of flair and color, her rich red uniform lined with gold. She winked as I catch her eye, and heat rushes up my face. It'll be a while before she gets to me, though. You're first in line, miss. She's cut off by a ticket being shoved under her chin. The woman in front is tall, silver and sharp as a polished blade. Is there no... Oh! It's a b <laughs> Are they just popping up in flowers or- Darling! If you would. Of course, ma'am. Wouldn't want to hold up a VIP. A bright smile from the conductor goes unanswered, and once she ripped off the tab of the ticket, the other woman vanishes inside the main car. Next! I scoot a couple of step forwards when there's a gap in the line, only to hear the conductor grunt with effort as two large canary yellow suitcases are urged right into her hands. <coughs> mm. Sorry, if you could help me with these real quick, I'll get out of your hair. Uh, no problem, ma'am. How many, how many of these do you have? Five? No, six. Knock out femme. Excellent. It's not hard to laugh as the conductor tries to juggle the suitcases, ticket, and gracefully accept the woman's apologies all at once. The passenger does her best to help, but there are just so many bangs. I'll be right back, everyone. She returns a moment later, smoothing out the wrinkles in her vest and calls up the next person in line. It's an older woman with her hair cut short and clean, reaching into the pocket of her jeans and taking out a brown wallet. Then she hesitates, letting that one drop before pulling a black wallet from her jacket instead. Here you go, miss. Salt and pepper put- butch- oh my god! Head on to the back, but try not to be a stranger to everyone, okay? This is a pleasure trip. I'll keep that in mind. Wouldn't want to disappoint a lady. The scar across her mouth tugs tight when she smiles. A little flustered, the conductor waves her inside the train. And next? Oh, that's me. At least I don't have a lot of baggage to carry on board. Hello, sweetheart. Ticket, please. Here you go. Man, the low quality of that. <laughs> oh, that picture, it's so big too, like damn. She holds it to the light for a moment before tearing off the shorter end and handing the rest of the ticket back. I wonder if the conductor likes her job. I guess I could always ask. Is this work as exciting as it looks? Her laughter is light, almost playful. I catch a twinkle in the conductor's eyes as she looks me over from head to toe. Is there no music? <laughs> I just realized. Hold on. There is music. Okay. I just couldn't hear the, <laughs> the background music. And I have this in my way. That's 
a bit of a pain. There you go. I should just have this on game capture instead of the display capture. Oh well. I catch a wrinkle in the conductor's eye as she looks- Oh wait, no, I already said this. What do you think? Exciting depends on your definition. It might be, depending on what you do for a living. I'm a private investigator. Like the classic type, sniffing out clues, poring over files in my tiny office at home. Sniffing out clues. I don't have enough cases to hire a secretary though. Hopefully I will soon. Are you now? Interesting. Then shouldn't you know whether or not I like my job? Sharpen your eye, gumshoe. What? Am I stuck? Oh, oh, it's a... What? <laughs> Her clothes look brand new, like they've come right off the rack. Either the train company changes them with every season, or she hasn't been doing her job very long. Uh, well, you make the fall colors look really good. I don't think you've worked here long enough to decide. I'm not very interested. Honestly, I see one person that I'm interested in. <laughs> and of course, it's the fucking rich girl. <laughs> Pick the last one. Oh, you're talking about the second one? You make the fall colors look really good? Ooh! Well, you make the fall colors look really good. Delight brightens the conductor's eyes. Dude, she looks like she's going to murder me. <laughs> I'm not sure how much that will show on my annual review, but I appreciate it. What is... what is this? Oh! Oh! She's definitely teasing me. That could mean that the conductor really does like her job or she's being snarky to call attention to the obvious. Either way, she's pretty and a little older than I expected at first glance. Flattery is best? Hey, you know what? I understand that you say flattery is best, but... Me, personally, I'm not aiming for her. <laughs> I ain't got time for flattery with a, with a, with a character I'm not interested in. She whipped out of fucking sunglasses. You probably like it. I know a fake service smile when I see one. A low chuckle leaves the conductor's lips. Are you sure about that? There are so many reasons to smile. Like, are the flowers mean that I'm doing good? That's funny. The symbol on her hat doesn't match the one on the outside of the train. <laughs> She's a fake conductor. Find the speed dating car and let's get this Yuri train rolling. It's the beginning of the visual novel. Nice hat. Now she looks even more amused. Maybe that's a good thing. Why, thank you. I had to modify it a touch myself. Before I can open my mouth again, the conductor hushes me with a light squeeze on one shoulder. As fun as it is to chat, there are plenty of people in line behind you. And I'm afraid your ticket wasn't an early bird reservation. No assigned seat. What, was, what does that mean? It means you have to choose who to share a car with. The whole passenger manifest is a long mile, so how about you make my life a little easier and choose from the three ladies that already came on board? I'm sure they'll all make for charming, charming company. She holds out a trio of tickets for me, and I take a closer look. Oh, I get to just immediately choose who who I want to pursue. This is my fucking choice. <laughs> I remember the silver-haired woman, the one who had so boldly cut to the front of the line. A woman like that knows what she wants and how to get it. The thought gives me a little thrill. Plus, her behavior tickled my curiosity. Why has she been in such a hurry? I would like this cabin, please. The conductor chuckles, seemingly in anticipation. The VIP cabin, hmm? You're a lady with high standards. Unfortunately for you, so is its current resident. Let's hope you can convince her to let you stay. Oh, well, if it's a problem, I can move along, please. We're on a tight schedule. Whoever is behind me... 
in line, whoever is behind me in line pushes me forward. I gather my luggage and make my way to the proper cabin, suddenly nervous about my choice. Each cabin on the Peacock Express is as comfortable and aesthetically pleasing as it needs to be, but the VIP cabins are something else. The cushions are softer and the baubles are shinier, the seats are more spacious. I'm surprised the conductor let some common passenger like me set foot in a VIP cabin, let alone occupy one. The sharp looking woman from before sits in one of the seats. A stack of manila folders sits beside her. She seems too distracted perusing papers to notice my entrance. Hello, don't mind me, I'm just gonna stow my things away. I shove my things into one of the compartments above my head. Then I turn back around, her eyes locked with mine in a cold, steely gaze. This moment is brief, however, and she wordlessly returned to her attention to her files. I sit in the seat across from her. It looks like we're gonna be sharing a car for the journey. My name is Simon, private investigator. Cassandra, charmed. Wow, she didn't even look up that time. Talk about a frosty reception. Good thing I'm an expert at cracking open cold case. Cracking open cold cases. <laughs> I gesture towards the window window, and look outwards. It's a beautiful time of the year to be traveling, isn't it? I was a little disappointed when I couldn't squeeze any vacation time in when it was warmer, but the sight of the leaves changing made it worth the wait. And so, and this train is so enchanting. I bet it looked downright picturesque from the outside, a luxury train racing across the countryside. I hear a scoff. You got your work cut out with this one? Hey! <laughs> of course I choose the difficult one, you know? I turn to see that Cassandra has shut one of the manila folder in her lap, her lips pursed in a thin line. Astounding. It seemed that VIP ticket tickets mean absolutely nothing these days. Brr. Oh, um, you expected to have a car to yourself, I take it. Maybe that's usually the case, but it sounds like this ride is at full capacity, so yeah, looks like you're stuck with me. <laughs> what a fucking liar, I chose to be here. <laughs> But trust me when I tell you, I'm going to be the most interesting and charming train buddy you could have. She rolls her eyes and starts to sift through another stack of papers. Hmm, but you seem more like a woman of action. You're on a fancy train bound to travel the countryside for a week, but you're dressed as sharp as a tack. Like, you're still on the job. You're digging through those photos, but you're not just browsing, you're looking for something. You have evidence in your hands, and you're still trying to piece it together. What a fucking nosy <laughs> little and the uh, protagonist. Combine that with the freshly pressed suit and the desire for a private cabin, you are an agent from the CIA. <laughs> what the fuck, bitch? Oh shoot, you might be a Russian spy. Cassandra sighs heavily. She abandons, she abandons the voters and oh my god, I accused her of being a spy and now she's reaching into something in one of her suit's inner pockets. I begin to sweat. She withdraws a tiny case from her pocket, opens it, and brandishes a deadly set of business cards? Uh, Cassandra, what are you- Be quiet and pay attention. Oh my god, she's a magician. Cassandra clutches the cards between two hands and twists, tearing them clean down the middle. She hands me the contents of one of her- what, what? She hands me the content of one of her hands, tossing the rest back into the case. Given that you absolutely refuse to leave me in peace, I will humor you for the time being. If your hands are pieces of business cards from various sources, one of them belongs to me. If you can correctly guess my last name and what I do, 
then I might consider you worthy of my attention. <laughs> what if I fail? It's just an immediate fail. <laughs> Game over. My heart races. A test of deduction to impress a woman? Now this is now this I can do. Before I sift through these business cards, let's have a look at Cassandra. Hmm, not only does that jacket look crisp and clean, it seems to be custom tailored. It fits her perfectly. No wedding ring, but I see a gold watch peeking out from the edge of her sleeves. Between that and the suit, she's obviously pretty wealthy. She's also right-handed, judging as how she sorted through those papers. As for her physical appearance, the lines around her mouth and eyes as well as that silver hair put her somewhere in her late 50s or early 60s. She looks great though. There's not a hair out of place, her gaze is alert and confident, and her features are sharp and defined. Gosh, I hope I'm not blushing. At any rate, none of these details are screaming any one occupation. She could be a politician, a businesswoman, a clown in disguise, or a secret agent. Do your investigations usually require this much gawking? Of course, appearances can say a lot about a person. In my line of work, sometimes you really can judge a book by its cover. Interesting. We agree on that much, at least. Oh yeah? You weren't exactly keeping your eyes to yourself just now. What do you think when you look at me? Get back to work. Yes, ma'am. I start to flip through the card scraps Cassandra gave me. For each one, the only information left intact seems to be the surname. The names are as follows. Well, whatever she does, she has a C in the title. CFO, CEO. <laughs> that is true. Uh, the names are as follows. Batia, Fiore, Sanchez, Valdez, Ezra, Tamaki, and Kite. Kite? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. They're all different names, but... Wait a second. Hmm? These business cards. She's a graphic artist. <laughs> She's just, she's just, she just done, she just do a lot of, like, really good, uh, she just has really good clients who pays her well. <laughs> Since you say graphic artist, I'm gonna go with the second one. I was about to say, like, the second choices seems to be the one that is, a uh, flattery at the current moment. I wanna go for the second one. Their designs... You're not gonna melt her with flattery yet. You right about that. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I was like, uh, she she wants me to she wants me to like solve for shit first, you know. I want to see what the what they look all the same is. They all look the same. No. Yeah. I don't know why. It's, that's really it's, see. That's really weird. Where to like these business cards? I'm fucking rolling back on these choices. But, you know, that's also a flaw in, like, visual novels, where it's, um, what is it? Where, where if you can just easily roll back on the decisions, it's like, oh, what's the point? <laughs> it's really funny when you're like, oh, 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 sorry, wrong one, let me just roll back, thank you. Blowtorch for this ice queen? Their designs are stunning! Why, thank you. It is rare to meet others with such subtle, yet distinguished taste. Hold up, now that I'm looking these over, the name Kite rings a bell. Yeah, that's it, we departed from the Kite Station. Then that means... Your name is Cassandra Kite, isn't it? CEO of Kite Transit? For the first time, I see a hint of a smile from Cassandra. It's small, but it still makes me flush with pride. That's right, I'm a huge name in transportation and infrastructure. But that means you're one of the richest CEOs in the world. Right again. You can see, then, why I might have more important things to do than sit and chat with a random passenger. So, there you have it. You have proved that you have a few tricks up your sleeves, and I prove that I'm a very, very busy woman. In other words, stop bothering me. 
Somehow, her words only make me blush harder. I was closer to the mark with my first guess than you let on, wasn't I? Excuse me? Maybe you're no secret agent, but you really look- you really are looking for something. You seem really concerned when you were searching through those files. Don't take this the wrong way, but you clearly have a problem. The kind of problem a private investigator might be able to solve. Aw, shit! <sighs> Very well. Yes, I seem to have stumbled upon a bit of a mess. Oh yeah, I forgot I have the loot thing still going on. Oh shit, now I get double advertisement. Ah, oh, how do I turn this off? Dude, the 14 inch razor blade? How fucking, how expensive is that shit? You mentioned employing the skills of a private investigator. Where, oh where, could I find one of those in the middle of an extended train excursion? <laughs> well, I guess I could put my vacation on pause. Vaca- vacation. Very well. Consider yourself hired, Simon. On one condition. You name it, you got it. Cassandra's eyes flit over me as she holds my gaze. This, the terms are simple. If you can solve this debacle for me, I will reward you graciously as you are due. If you fail, however, you are not to speak to me for the remainder of the trip. Is that understood? Yes, ma'am. That sounds fair to me. So, what's the job? She pauses one last time, considering. Then she picks her way through one of the folders on her lap until she plucks a staple packet from its depths. Depth, depth, depths. Before we discuss any further details, you must sign this. I accept the packet and skim its contents. That there are so many S's. There's a lot of legal jargon, but I managed to glean enough meaning, glean enough meaning from it to understand its purpose. This is a non-disclosure agreement? Indeed it is. Consider it a formality. A formality that would you let that would let you sue the pants off of me, sure. In due time. Wait, what? Will you sign it or not? You're trying my patience as it is. Sorry, I'm signing it. Thank you for understanding. I scribbled Simon P.I. in the designated space. Cassandra accepts it and files it away. Mills need lovings too? If she refused, kidnap her. Oh, first of all, she's the CEO of the train I'm riding on, so I don't think kidnapping her would be the uh, the best decision. And I'm on a and I'm on a one week vacation. She then places the stack of folders on the seat beside her and faces me squarely, staring with an intensity that affirms the gravity of her situation. I feel like I'm starting- I might know what she wants now. Just, uh, based on her character. She kind of reminds me of Victoria. Is that her name? Victoria from Life is Strange. In simple terms, I believe one of my employees has betrayed me. Betrayed? In what way? That is what I'm trying to find out. If someone means to have me removed from the executive board, I need to know who they are and how they are doing it. I see, so if you don't know what they're doing to sabotage you, how do you know someone's after you in the first place? There has been rumors. There have been rumors. Well, well, well done, <laughs> English. Rumors that I cannot ignore. So I had my secretary assemble as much possible, as much possible evidence, what? As she could find. Milbs always have hidden sex wishes, what? You've been talking to a lot of Milbs, Razor? Sure enough, I'm finding oddities. Numbers don't, don't, that don't add up. People in the company I don't remember existing. I just haven't been able to fully parse it all. It's all in front of me, but I don't know who the evidence implicates. If I don't identify the culprit by the time my daughter's piano recital, I'm afraid it will be too late. By the time of your daughter's piano recital, like, that's pretty specific. Your daughter's recital? Yes, that was originally the end goal of this trip. 
I was going to have a pleasant train ride in a luxury cabin and arrive at our destination in time to see my daughter perform. Instead, I'm going to be racking my brain over these documents while the ghost of my job security haunts my every waking hour. Maybe she's just going cray cray. Well, she is one of the richest women in the world, apparently. Yikes, talk about poor timing. Can you tell me a little bit about your daughter, just out of curiosity? To my surprise, Cassandra's scowl softens. Yes, of course. My daughter turned 10 last June. I adopted her when she was only an infant, and have raised her with my own raised her on my own ever since. Well, except when I've needed to hire a nanny. I've always been overseeing a critical project for the past week and a half, and I'm eager to return home to see her and the product of her piano lessons. But if those rumors turns out to be true and I'm ousted from the board, she closes her eyes then shakes her head. When Cassandra looks at me again, her scowls has returned. Enough small talk. Now that you know the core details, I need to know that you are committed to helping me solve this riddle. Will you help me? I look at Cassandra, man, I already fucking signed the NDA anyways, like, what do you want from me? You like the art style? Me too. I'm liking it. I, I, I like the backgrounds too. I look <laughs> the design of the protagonist, on the other hand, I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> I look at Cassandra and her well-pressed suit and perfectly styled hair. She is the very picture of an important, powerful woman, but she is asking for my help. Because you offered her your help. So what the fuck? <laughs> Beach. Maybe she was only humoring me at first, but I think now that all her cards are out on the table, she's really worried. Being raised by her is like being raised by ocelots. After all, if she loses her job, it won't just be her that's affected. She's thinking about her daughter too. Then again, she is one of the richest CEOs in the world, in all likelihood, and she, she'll have some money to fall back on. Her pride might be what's in greater danger here. Either way, I can't shake that feeling I got when Cassandra smiled at me. That feeling alone is enough to sway my decision. I stick my open hand towards her. Miss Kite, you can count on me. I'm on the case. Amusement shows and faint creases around her eyes. Ooh, that's a nice, that's a nice sentence. Crisp. She takes my hand and shakes it. Glad to hear, Miss Simon. We'll start here. Cassandra gathers her stack of files and dumps them into my arms. I don't know how long this game is. <laughs> on the top is a cover letter that says, Here are the documents you requested, Miss Kite. A messy signature adorns the bottom. Placing the letter aside, I make my way through the files, skimming each of them as Cassandra speaks. The, real, the rumors actually started a few months ago. Peacock Express equals murder on Orient Express. Just less murder, more urine. <laughs> Every time I think of train, I think of uh, Bacano and the train, the flying pussyfoot. Now that's a fucking train I would ride. <laughs> The rumors actually started a few months ago. I thought a I thought little of them at first. When you're in a position of power, you hear whispers all the time, but their persistence demanded my attention. I kept a wary eye on our numbers, but never saw anything conclusive. It wasn't until I had everything in front of me that I realized how serious the danger is. I want to agree with her and say that these reports look totally shady, but the truth is, I have no idea what I'm looking at. They're so full of busy grabs and corporate jargon, I can't make heads or tail of anything. Pussyfoot is better than Peacock. <laughs> the flying pussyfoot. <laughs> Meanwhile, Cassandra's getting into full businesswoman mode, talking about quarterly reports and holdings and partnerships, somehow all in the same breath. Hey, Cassandra? She pauses and raises an eyebrow. What is it? I don't think we're going to find anything just looking at reports. I mean, sure, you notice a few quirks in the files, but understanding the big picture might us might require us to take a more humanistic approach. 
I don't understand what you mean. What I'm trying to say is that we need to understand the traitor's motive. Figuring out why they're doing this will help us narrow down our list of suspects. I think it's con contempor con con contemporary, but not anything like a bullet train. Are uh, you talking about what Razor was saying? Is it any specific century in that game, or is it modern but look like old century? I think this might be in like an older, not older generation, but maybe back in like 1990s or something. But that train did look pretty nice. I need more clues. Sure, your moves, miss. It's just for clues. <laughs> the traitors are. The traitor is hiding between those breasts. Numbers and graphs don't show motive, though. Motive, though. People do. Cassandra frowns at this, knitting her brow into a deep scowl. People? She doesn't protest, though. In fact, she turns to dig something out of her bag. Eventually, she plucks a photo from within and hands it to me. Here, this is a photo of the executive board of Kite Transit. My top suspect are circled in red. <laughs> she just circles them. They both have the power and ability to dethrone me. Ah, yes. <laughs> Why not just circle every one of them then? Oh, can I can I click on them? Let's see. Oh, I can. I examine the leftmost circled figure. She appears to be a middle-aged woman, a bit younger than Cassandra. That is our chief operating officer, the COO, and my second in command. The COO has power over human resources. So you think the second in command might want to be first in command? Oh, possibly. I've rejected quite a few people she's wanted me to hire. Maybe she's grown tired of butting heads with me. If I was out of the picture, she'd be able to bring in as many of her people as she'd like. And, and what, what, what are those people going to do? Like, do they have experience or what? Like, what the fuck's going on? The middle figure is an older, balding man. The financial, the chief financial officer. As CFO, he handles financial risk. He's meek, almost spineless, really. But he's also the one to take whatever path leads to the most money. With me gone, he would be able to cut as many corners as he'd like and, and make inordinate sums of money. Plus, he'd know how to manage it all. So the motive here is money. To an extent, yes. I look at the rightmost circled figure. They seem to be a little younger than the others. That's the chief information officer, or CIO. They manage our in databases. They manage? Like, <laughs> what, what do you mean, they? And keep Kite Transit fitted with the latest innovation in transport. Okay, with new strategy, have sex with the ladies to make them confess and hit those guys and they will confess. <laughs> what? <laughs> to be honest, they aren't the type to grasp for money or power. They rarely express interest in anything beyond their computer screen. So why are they on the suspect list? Of the three, they are the one with the ability to manipulate data. Give some numbers a nudge in just right places, and it can cause a chain reaction, eventually resulting in a da disaster. A disaster which, naturally, would be pinned on me. Your suspects are your top board members, huh? What's wrong? Man, this is why I don't like dating sims sometimes. Because I'm over like, man, I don't fucking know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> The second one sounds like a backhanded compliment, like, oh, you have such a high standard, why would you hire these people? Dude, second from right look dis disenfranchised. <laughs> it is a fucking flattery thing. Oh my god, I keep on forgetting that it's like a... Uh, flattery shit. You seem like you have such high standards. I guess that's the problem with me when it comes to dating sims, and I'm like, how do you flatter people? You seem like you have such a high standards, why would you even hire such untrusty, more trustworthy per people? Cassandra raises her eyebrows. The corner of her mouth quirks for a fraction of an instant. I'm afraid you misunderstood, misunderstand me. 
The three are very capable and have been invaluable workers over the years. As competent as they are, however, that doesn't change the fact that one of them has questionable loyalties. You know how these old partnerships go, spend too much time with someone and you grow sick of them. I just didn't expect one of them to be this spiteful. I bet he has the corporation was rightfully mine or she stole it backstory. <laughs> A guy who looked like fucking Spock. So basically, you think the primary motive is general animosity. That seems a little far-fetched, to be honest. There's usually some kind of catalyst, a final straw sort of thing. Uh, have there been any fights between you and any of the board members? Yeah, the light's dying. Uh, any of the board members that may have been- that may have pushed them over the edge. We often have petty squabbles over small details, such as the nature of business, but there have been no major incidents in recent memories. Then why do you think that's the motive? Cassandra sighs. It's clear her patience is wearing thin. Nevertheless, she maintains her composure and reaches into her files again. Or fetch Pokemon for Switch confirm 100%. Damn, boy. Fucking broke already buying Mario Tennis, so... <laughs> This is the only proof I have that one of them is unhappy with me. Try telling me that this isn't evidence enough. That this isn't evidence. Isn't evidence enough? What the fuck? Cassandra fishes out a note and hands it to me. I examine it. I examine it closely. I was kind of hoping the note would be written in a bunch of cutout of letters from magazines and newspapers like in the movies, but no luck. The message is handwritten on the kind of paper you'd find in an office printer. It reads, I deserve your place. My god, Bride Biscuits, you you were right. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's my rightful decision. It's my rightful place. She's smiling a lot at you. She really wants with you. I can feel that. No, I, I think you're feeling the wrong thing, Razor, because she's the fucking... She's as cold as the fucking ice shard that... That hit the Titanic. What the fuck is that thing? Ice shards. I called it an ice shards. Well then. I found it pinned to my desk a week ago. Clearly someone is unhappy with their position. Unhappy enough to confirm my suspicion in very plain terms. You can make her change? Well, I mean. But it makes no sense at all. I've been consistently generous with promotions, bonuses, and benefits. I've given them all they have deserved, and none of them have expressed any desire for more. Why the sudden discontent? I look at the photo again, staring at each board member in turn. They each have similar plastered on smiles, the kind you give for these obligatory group photos. Even Cassandra's expression is marginally less dour. One of these people must be the culprit. It's clear the note wasn't left by some random prankster. It had to be with someone with access to Cassandra's desk. Yet, as I consider each option, recounting what she told me about each suspect, something doesn't feel quite right. Why don't you have a fucking camera if somebody managed to put it on your fucking desk? Like, if you had cameras to, like, the outside of your of your door, you'd, you'd be able to look it up and, like, oh, this person went into my room and, you know... Like, during this time, like, around this air, uh, time range. New strategy, get everything wrong until she gives you pity sex or throws you out. Then look for someone lower maintenance. There has to be a rave culture chick on this train somewhere. You had three options. Um, it was... It was, um... It was just, uh, it was, there was these two other ladies, but, like, I was the one who, who chose this lady because, fuck it, man, I love these kind of characters. <laughs> they're so fucking, they're so fucking bad, but I love them all the same. Oh, I need to, I need to search that up. Is it Victoria? Is that her name from, uh, Victoria from Victoria? Life is Strange? Life is- Life is- What does it say? Victoria Chase! Yeah, that's her name. I loved Victoria. She was one of my favorite characters in Life is Strange. And then there was this, uh, Yuri visual novel called, uh, Lo uh, Love is Strange, where you had the choice to date Victoria. 
One of the best fucking Yuri Vision novel right there. Okay. Who's the other girl? Emily from, um... What's her name? Emily from... Until Dawn. There you go. Emily from Until Dawn. I loved Emily. Just a little bit of backstory of, like, why like I love these characters. Mwah! But Victoria was a little bit... Exactly! That's why I love Victoria. I love these characters. Yeah, but it's good. I chose... I, I, I chose her in the beginning. <laughs> I was like, this is my... This is my choice. Each suspect has a vague reason to dis dispose Cassandra, sure, but none of them seem worth the risk. The motives are too weak. And if Cassandra is to be believed, there have, haven't, haven't been any serious disagreements recently that may have prompted the culprit to turn on her. Love is Strange is the name of the game. That was uh, the dating sim for Life is Strange. I was gonna play... Uh, I finished Victoria's route, but I was gonna play... What is that other girl? That other girl who... Uh, who got bullied during the first and second episode. I was gonna play her out because I liked her too. Kate? Kit Kat. I remember calling her Kit Kat. I think it's... I think her name's Kate, right? Anyways, gonna continue. So you like characters with villain behaviors? Not villain behaviors, just people who act code to you. Cause I, cause it's more or less just my favorite, my, my, my kind of characters. Cause I'm over here like, I know they have some fucking terrible backstory or some shit. Like, I know they have their own problems and I totally understand that. <laughs> uh, no, there must be something else, some other factor that I'm not seeing. Let's look at this photo one more time. We have the CEO, the COO, the CFO, and the CIO. Wait a second. <laughs> I love it when you say all those together. Cassandra said that this photo includes Kite Transit's executive board, but if they're all in the shot... Cassandra, who took this photo? Cassandra scoffs and rolls her eyes. I think it's the biggest display of emotion I've ever managed to get out of her. What, may I ask, does this have to do with the case? You're not listening, I told you. These are the only three people who could be the traitor. I hired you operating under the assumption that you would take this seriously. What if it was like an automatic photo kind of thing, you know? <laughs> Not an automatic photo, but you know, like a timer. <laughs> I take my cases very seriously, Miss Kite. Let's see if I can get this. I just want to know as much as possible as I can get the full picture, literally, in this case. Cassandra peers at me curiously, considering. Then she sighs and shrugs. You're right, of course. You'll have to forgive me. This whole fiasco has me flustered. The janitor... <laughs> the, the janitor took the picture. My secretary took the photo. <gasps> Ironically, even though she isn't in the shot, she is the most reliable person in my life at present. She ensures every task is completed to the letter, even if it means staying late. She handles my appointment, filters my phone calls, picks up my morning coffee, performs nearly any task you can think of. Oh. Oh, I wonder. <laughs> I wonder who's the suspect. Even if it's staying late. Ah, oh, my life would be chaos without her. She's been angling for a promotion for years, but I can say without a doubt that is there that there is no person I would rather replace. Wait, I would rather have handling my schedule. She is irreplaceable. <laughs> she's been she's been wanting to fucking promote for years. <laughs> Hearing that, an idea pops into my head. I rummage around until I find a cover letter again. I point it to the scribbled name at the bottom of the page. Is this the secretary's signature then? Indeed, she gathered all the documents you see here, as per my request. I nod, holding the threatening note that is so, that it that it is what? Wait, no. Oh, I hold the threatening note so that it is adjacent to the cover letter's signature. It appears that the two are written in the same pen. How do you know that it's in the same pen? What the fuck? In addition, though the signature is less legible, there are a few quirks that are present in both documents. 
The lack of slopes, the tiny lettering, the closed loops. There's no doubt about it. The person who signed the letter also wrote the threat. Cassandra, uh, did you have any suspect aside from those three on the executive board? Friends close, but enemies closer. No, nobody else has the ability to affect these reports in such a way. But you don't have any definite evidence pointing to any of them, and you say you've been fair to each of them in regards to pay and benefits. In a nutshell, yes. But you've been denying your secretary's request for a promotion. I have, but for good reasons. What? Oh my god, I'm getting fucking... Oh, dude, did I change that by accident? Ah, oh, shit, I'm gonna get fucking... Hold on. Dude, my double advertisement is getting fucking attacked. <laughs> oh shit! What the fuck is Thrones of Britannia? Does she see it the same way? Cassandra pauses. She watches me through narrowed eyes. Fucking racist, just because I'm Asian, you're gonna do this? The most nearest person that you... That you that have access to all your stuff. <laughs> nah, she wouldn't betray me. What do you mean? Speak plainly. Yes, speak in layman's term. I mean, I don't think someone who was happy with their position would continue to ask for a promotion. Your secretary has been working dutifully, more than most of the executive board, it sounds like, but there's no payoff. Uh, that has to get tiring after years of hard work. With this in mind, don't you think that there's a possibility she could be the culprit? Cassandra gives me an absolutely incredulous look, her eyes wide. Man, now that's a new fucking facial expression right there. Excuse me? I must have misheard. It sounded like you said my secretary, of all people, is the traitor. That's right, if you'll allow me to explain. You've come to this conclusion after having listened to me rave about my, secretary reli my secretary's reliability and loyalty? I don't think she's as loyal as you think. In fact, I think she's plotting against you. But that's impossible. She has no real power over me. She hasn't the money nor the status. Why, it would be like David trying to take down Goliath. Well, maybe if she gets if she gets somebody new, they might give her a promotion. <laughs> It's the secretary's evil twin brother. He's manipulating her precision to get at the company. <laughs> uh, didn't David win that one? Uh, maybe this isn't the best time to correct her. Yeah, you know, fucking CEO doesn't even know the story about David and Goliath. I know it's hard to believe, but if you let me lay out the evidence, I think you'll start to understand. I certainly hope so. Now then, first of all, there are some unique quirks found in the note and cover letter signature. <laughs> Obviously, the same person wrote the note and the cover letter signature. Quirks? What do you mean? Little details in the handwriting. Things like how T's are crossed and I's are dotted. Everyone writes differently, so their handwriting is like a fingerprint. She already said she has access to our files and appointment, and now she says, nah, she doesn't have any power over me. <laughs> I see. So you're saying the same hand penned both the signature and the note? Exactly. See, right here, the letters are about the same size, and they lean the same way. Plus, the ink look to be the same. I don't... I, I guess I'm not a pen enthusiast, where I can see, like, the... the the, the similarity between pens or if it's a, or if it's from the same pen I see there are a fair few similarities now that I'm looking more closely that said I hope you've considered more evidence than a messy signature and vague note for sure we have to consider the motive too pour some alcohol down the seal throat that'll make her more cooperative I don't I don't think that- We're trying to solve a case here, not to get drunk. I think your secretary feels held back. Uh, you might want to think about changing your secretary's job to coffee fetcher. 
Okay, the first one does actually suck. <laughs> I think it's the second one, but I'm gonna go for the first one just to see. <laughs> yeah, it's the second one. I think your secretary feels held back. You said so yourself, right? She wants a promotion, but you keep turning her down. She wouldn't ask for a promotion unless she wanted to move up in the world. On the flip side, you've given the other board members benefit aplenty. They don't have as much as, as a reason to reach for more. In fact, seeing you give promotions and benefits to the people at the top probably frustrates her even more. Hmm... I think the CEO has this IQ of a soap dish. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Nothing. You have more evidence, I suspect. What more evidence do you need? Yes, I have one more thing. Get out some bread and mayo, cause those files are baloney. <laughs> those files you said then add up. Your secretary put them together. Yes, I know. I asked her to. I told you this, remember? Yeah, but I just told you. That your secretary might be a fucking suspect. Right, so that means she could put whatever she wanted in them. I suppose. Where are you going with this? What I mean to say is that your secretary, sec sec secretary had power over what was in those files. You said so yourself. The numbers in those reports made no sense. She must have included false data and records. Rec records that could point to one of your co-workers as the culprit and if you fired one of them thinking that they were the traitor well you be the one getting your pants sued off and removed from the board good lord i think he may be right i expected cassandra to get angry again now be it at her secretary instead of me this time th this time but instead she sits in silence a deep crease in her brow cassandra are you okay Certainly not. Would you be fine in my position? I've just learned that my most loyal employee has been lying to me, and I should be enraged at this, but I... I must admit, I feel strange. I could see her reasoning so clearly now. I can see myself through her eyes, and I fear I may be the one in the wrong. No, no, you not... Not maybe, you are! <laughs> I stare at her, wondering if I heard correctly. One of the wealthiest CEOs in the world admitting she's wrong and a subordinate is right? If I hadn't signed a non-disclosure agreement, I would consider recording this. Hey, hey Simon, I got you. I got you. Whoops, she's still talking. Focus, Simon. Code on the jokes. What is it? Okay, what a code myth. She don't, she don't give any promotion to her most loyal employer. But yeah, I'm going to give some promotions to the people I think that they can betray a very smart. Uh, secretary gonna become tired slash her faster than you blink if you make her get coffee. And yet, even if there were any true danger, her actions are in direct violation of true uh, of company rules. That means you're gonna have to fire that bitch. I should be thinking about firing her, not rewarding her with a promotion. She pauses again, consumed by indecision. Eventually, she looks at me and blinks in puzzlement. You're being unusually quiet. Don't you have any thoughts on the situation? Oh, um... I guess that's her way of asking me how I should I would treat her secretary were I in her place. Your secretary deserves more. You should reward her for her dedication. Bitch, she tried to throw you off. Your secretary has broken your trust and tried to ruin everything you work for. Give her the boot. Ex exactly. I feel like the first one might actually be the right one, but... I'm gonna go over the second one just to check. Give her the boot! You're supposed to kick the bad guy's butt, not give them the keys to the city. Show her and everybody who's boss. If you promote her, there's a good chance she won't be happy for long. She'll keep clawing her way up, breaking rules and ruining lives along the way. Yeah, like once you some, someone breaks your trust, like... How you... <laughs> It's a tough choice, letting go of someone you've spent years working alongside, but you've got to do what you've got to do. I mean, you're CEO, right? You probably do stuff like this all the time. Firing people? I mean, I hope not. 
I see. I'll keep your suggestion in mind. I'm going to wait until I return. Dude, it was the first one. Oh my fucking god. I'm going to fight. Hold on. Let me go check the first one. I swear it's the first one. It's like, oh yeah, you should. Hold on. Oh, it is the first one. Bullshit. Bullshit. What do you mean promote her? F fuck you. All right. I'm trying to go for the, uh, the, the, I don't know. I guess the, the better ending. So. Your, your secretary deserves more. You should reward her for her dedication. I mean, it's only fair since you've been rewarding your other employees. And if she's this reliable as a secretary, think how much she could do for the company in a higher position. <laughs> Bullshit! Although, uh, maybe don't mention that you knew her plans if you promote her. Gotta reward the hard work, not the evil plot. I see. I'll keep your suggestions and my- FUCK YOU! I'm going to wait until I've returned to work to make that decision. However, it isn't one that should be made lightly. Not when someone's livelihood is in the palm of my hand. It's a good thing you have a whole luxury train ride to think about it then. Indeed, I'd rather much think about that than spend a trip in fear of losing my position. Or missing my daughter's recital, as it were. So, I've totally convinced you then? Cassandra's lips quirk in a wry smile. Beyond a doubt, your evidence is sound, and your dead and your deductions make more th sense than my clumsy attempts at sleuthing. You should be honored, detective. Few are able to perform to my standards. It's significantly more than I expected from a strange, wrong young girl barging into my train car at the very least. <laughs> It's, uh, it's kind of a habit of mine, now that you mention it. Oh, and Cassandra? Yes? I'm glad we solved this mystery together. Not just for my sake, but for you and your daughters, too. I think you're a kind person underneath the cold businesswoman exterior. Yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> that's why I fucking... Cold girls reminds me of Kudere's and Sundere's, and I love both of them. They're kind of like a merge of, uh... <laughs> oh, really? Do you have any evidence to support this claim? Ah, shit, plenty! You've made a point to shrug it off, but you clearly care a lot for your employees. You've given them the benefits they deserve, uh, mostly, and you value, the value them despite their flaws. You are empathetic about your secretary's skills and heartbroken when you learn that she lied to you. And I don't think I didn't notice how soft you got when I asked about your daughter. How about it? Do those deductions sound about right? Secretary, your underhanded te tre treachery knows no bound. Have you considered a career in <laughs> That's fucking stupid. Like, are you telling me that was the good decision? With like the flowers coming out? Like, bullshit. Cassandra smiles again, peering at me with a knowing gaze. I venture that certain inclination may cloud your judgment in this case, in this instance. But thank you, that is generous of you to say. Cassandra look at the time f at the at the files scattered across the cabin, at all the graphs, charts, and records. I suppose we won't be needing these anymore. You want help putting them away? No, thank you. This one, this is one mess I can take care of myself. Cassandra gathers the papers unsorted, understandable given that a good portion of, uh, good portions are full of false data, and stores them in her luggage. As she finishes, she sits beside me and breathes an exhausted sigh. I lean back into the cushy seat and do the same. Hmm. <laughs> I definitely do not think about the fact that it's the closest Cassandra has sat next to me. I look across the cabin to the window. The sky has started to turn colors, blushing shades of red and pink as the sun sinks to the horizon. Provide her- Ah, shit! We're well into the countryside now, racing, racing past distant hills with the occasional farm dotting the fields around us. At one point, we passed some kind of ranch with a field full of horses. Give her a neck rub? <laughs> I turn to point them to Cassandra. Rich people love horses, you know, only to catch her staring at me. You know, I nearly forgot. 
I promised you a reward for your efforts in the event of your success. What? Oh, right, you did say that. Uh, what did you have in mind? Hmm, well, money is easily given, as are tickets to travel wherever you please. Yet, I can't he feel- I can't help but feel as though you deserve a little something extra. <laughs> Provider, you've displayed exemplary wit and charm. It would be unfair to give you something that requires so little effort on my part. Hey, don't worry about it. It's what I do, you know. Hold on. Did you say charm? Cassandra smirks. For a moment, she looks almost devilish. I have an idea. I've spent all this time talking about myself, yet I barely know you. We have quite some time left in this trip, so why don't we spend it getting to know each other? Getting to- Oh! Yeah, I totally- I, I mean, yes. I think I would very much enjoy your, um, company. <laughs> Extra- <laughs> Cassandra laughs in earnest. My face and ears are undoubtedly competing with the sunset's flush hues. I look in a feeble attempt to hide my embarrassment, but long fingers trace along the edge of my jaw, guiding my attention back to Cassandra. Don't be shy. She tilts my chin with a knuckle. Despite her command, I am left speechless. She frowns, disappointed. I've always been a proponent for a delayed gratification myself, but she brushed her thumb across the very edge of my lower lip. My post leaps at her touch. I like suddenly the progress of just like, ooh, you've solved, some, solved my case and helped my career. I take interest in you now. <laughs> I suppose young blood burns hotter than my own these days. I wouldn't want to lose my edge. <laughs> Yeah, can't let yourself get out of practice, right? Ooh, look at the art change, man. My fucking- what? Oh, no, it's so light. You can see, like, the shadows and everything. Because this thing is in the way. I think it's- No, it's actually- Huh. That's weird. The light is like- <laughs> I'm ascending. <laughs> Cassandra doesn't answer, but smiles and looks over my flush expression. Then she totes her head and guides me forward. Her kiss is firm, but not passionless. It lingers, but not literally nearly long enough. I rest my hand at her waist, under her open jacket, where it's warm. I lean forward, offering another kiss, but she draws away with a soft chuckle. Eager to please, are we? Let's put that to use and find a more enjoyable way to en spend our evening. Milf Hunter. I catch myself nearly swooning at the suggestion. I feel the shake with an enthusiastic nod. Yes, ma'am, I hope there's like no sex scene, but if there is, I'm gonna have to like immediately go over to... Here, let me have my mouse at that. There you go. So I can click on that just in case. Who wants to hunt dragon be and beasts when you can hunt girls and MILF? She went from proper CEO to unbridled lesbian within one train stop. Cassandra laughs again. I feel a hand at my hip. Good girl. <clears throat> Hold on. I wanna... Oh, this is the end of the... It is a Yuri game jam. Yeah, it was the end. Okay. That was like, uh... An hour? Yeah, I think that was like an hour. That was... That was nice. I kind of... The decisions, though. Like, the, 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 the decision towards the end was pretty bullshit. But that was, uh... That was nice. You should have flat out leave her now and say, Meh, too easy. <laughs> Where's the sauce? Ooh... <laughs> Can't believe it. Yeah, that was nice. I, uh, there it is. <laughs> Lame. <laughs> Well, you have to remember that this is a Yuri game. Uh, Yuri 
game jam where they had only either like a day or something to make it not a day but somewhere like a week or or ish was fun i am glad you enjoyed the milf dating game <laughs> the dating sim <laughs>